Hello my fellow hunters, my name is Minodude, and today I will be your guide to the wonderful ecology of the world of Monster Hunter. This is a new series I thought of doing, and in it I will dive into the lore, ecology, and hunting strategies for a particular monster. I plan on teaching you nearly everything there is to know about the amazing beasts we fight so much. So, without any more introduction, here is Hunter's Handbook, number one, the Baroth. Name, Baroth. Class, Brute Wyvern. Elements and Elements, Mud. Threat Level, 4. Title, The Landslide Wyvern. Most Baroth make their homes in the harsh deserts of the Old and New World. They rely on pools of water or small swamps to keep themselves cool. Their hide consists of large armored plates that reflect the scorching heat. Baroth love to roll in mud and enjoy covering themselves in it. When traversing hot environments, that mud hardens and acts as a type of armor or another layer of protection from the sun. Baroth mark their territory by rubbing this muck onto nearby rocks. Mud is an essential part of the Baroth's life. You may have noticed the large chunk of hardened bone protruding from its head. Baroth used this to smash foes into the ground or charge any opponent. Not only that, but it also contains five small holes on top. These are actually its nostrils. The high placement of them allows the Baroth to breathe when fully submerged in mud. Despite their size and menacing appearance, Baroth are naturally docile and will only attack when provoked. As insectivores, Baroth mainly feed on small Neopterons or Temnocerans. For example, in the Wildspire Waste, Baroth can be seen shoving their faces into the wild spires, trying to devour the carrier ants inside. Baroth have few natural predators, but are commonly attacked by monsters such as the Diablos or the Joyratotis. These monsters are highly territorial and will not be afraid to attack a Baroth if one gets near. Now on to the proper ways of successfully hunting one of these beasts. The Baroth sports a natural weakness to fire, explaining its reliance on mud for protection. But when covered in mud, the effects of fire are nullified. If it's covered in mud, use weapons imbued with the element of water. This will quickly wash off the mud from its body and open it up for further attacks. Its relatively weak immune system opens up opportunities to use poison, paralysis, and sleep during a hunt. The element of blast is also very effective by allowing you to blow off chunks of its thick hide. The Baroth does have some resistances as well though. The effects of ice and dragon element are heavily lowered, and thunder doesn't even hurt it at all. It also resists blunt force from weapons like hammer or the hunting horn. During a hunt, watch out for its dangerous head. Attacks from it are easy to dodge and block, but if you do get hit, expect to be drinking a mega potion afterwards. If the muck on the Baroth's back is wet enough, it can shake off large globs of mud. Try to keep out of these or you might get stuck and give the Baroth a chance to smash you. On top of severely limiting your mobility, the Baroth's mud also inflicts water blight, which doubles the rate at which you lose stamina. To make the Baroth easier to handle, try attacking its scalp. Even though that area is more resilient and hard to hit, it will eventually break off and without it, the Baroth will hurt itself when charging into an object. The scalp can also be collected off the ground to bring back to the smithy. The Baroth's tail can also be severed, limiting its attacks. However, before you start cutting, all the mud on the tail must be removed. Like most tails, it can be picked up and taken back to base. The weakest part of the Baroth's body is its hands and underbelly. During a fight, center yourself around the legs and attack while evading its head and tail. It'll fall over in no time. Well, that's just about it on the Baroth. Tell me what you thought about this. I know there's a lot I can improve, so I'm open to feedback. If you liked it, 
leave a like on the video obviously, and tell me in the comments what monster I should cover next. If you're watching this and haven't subscribed yet, you totally should. I try to upload at least once each week. So with the standard YouTube video ending done, I will see you later.